stand by the hater when I feel like it. Not today, not today, not today, not tomorrow. Get out my way, please. I'm trying to get paid. Not today, not today. Week one, college football in the books. Week two, right around the corner. Uh, wild week one. I mean, uh, there's a lot of stories coming out of week one for sure, and a lot of interesting for data real. as well. So we want to we want to break down all of that stuff for you guys. Again, it's bully the board. Kevin, Seth, and Steve with you here. Um, let's not let's not beat around the bush. Okay, I want to add and I want to talk about. What the hell, the, the wild and wackiness that we saw that is college football and what was displayed on the field this, this past weekend. So, Steve, let me start with you, man. Um, I don't know how many games or which ones you got to watch, but uh, what stood out to you? Give me, give me your 30,000-foot view take real quick. Yeah, um, I was in a bachelor party in Nashville this last weekend, so I was trying to catch the games, but I was seeking country music and downing uh, drinks Ooh. all weekend. But I did manage to catch a little bit of the Colorado TCU and – um, LSU FSU game as well as Clemson Duke. So uh, I'm going to start with a Clemson Duke. Uh, that's the game I want to talk about real quick. Is Clemson dead? And, and I know we talk about not having week one over reactions and this and that, right? Yeah. But this is something we thought we this was going to be a problem with you know DJ Uyangale and that quarterback system. We thought we were past that with him being gone. We saw the transition last year and how that offense kind of perked back up. And then you have this loss to unranked Duke. And the reason I want to talk about this is we always talk about models and what they can and can't do, right? I have full faith in what we're doing here on this college sort of projection with this model stuff, but there's no way you saw this game coming. I, I, there's no way, right? No. Every, and everything you look at it, Clemson was supposed to be the better offense, the better defense, the better blue chip ratio. I think I saw something where Clemson has, what, 52 four- and five-star uh, yeah. uh, uh, players on their roster to Dukes too. So no matter what matchup or stat or metric you want to look at, this was supposed to be Clemson's game, and it handily wasn't. And I'm really happy to see Clemson on this matchup map being behind Duke, obviously, right? But really being that quadrant of suck as we talk uh, talk about it. Oh, um, because this is one of the teams where I was afraid Clemson was going to keep getting that re that reputation and respect. The being this elite team when I don't think that's the case anymore. I think we can show that. I, I have to say though, you're talking about no statistic would, would um, predict that even if you use the box score statistics from that game, it wouldn't predict Duke to win. That's how much Clemson shot themselves in the foot here. They had a 60% success rate on, on offensive that's plays. Wild. They, that's wild. I mean, they had three touchdowns, that they either turned over or didn't score in the red zone. Two blocked field goals. I, I'm with you here. Clemson looks looked bad. Big question marks here. They didn't go to the portal. They they're you know they they're of, co of course recruiting well because they're a juggernaut, right. but they're not using the portal. Dabo's gone on record saying I'll quit football once kids start getting paid. Um, maybe he's uh, we've talked about quiet quitting in the zeitgeist lately. I guess he's he does not like quiet quitting. He may be loud quitting like. Fuck yeah. y'all, I'm out. <laughs> um, but even if you look at the matchup map, Steve, I agree they're in quadrant of suck. Look how evenly or look how close Clemson is to Duke. That's how, yeah. yes, they looked so dominant, but if you actually per play break this down, this game wasn't all it wasn't wasn't that <laughs> like Duke could have lost this game. Like, you know, now it still mm -hmm. has a lot of questions about Clemson, no doubt about it. Um, and and then actually, Kevin, if you go to the rolling average, when I look back. You know, it's interesting. Um, Clemson is in the quadrant of elite, and Duke. Uh, where is Duke on here? Duke is now also in the quadrant of elite, but Duke's yep. actually the better team using a twelve-game rolling average going into this game, and that's just with that one game. So, like to your point, Duke was already kind of good going into this. Um, so I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's like Duke's turn or the changing of the guard here in the ACC. I'm sure we'll talk about it. There's a couple of teams in the ACC that look damn good. And yeah, maybe this yeah. is the end of Clemson, to your point. Like, it's just, you know, changing of the guard. Well, so can I ask you real quick then, Seth? So if you had to pick one, is did Clemson lose this game or did Duke win this game? I hate to do this to you, Steve. Both. Like, I and I don't want to, I don't want to be, <laughs> no, I, I don't want to be hand wavy and I don't want to get not answer the question. <laughs> I think, I, I think Duke won this game. I do. They had to generate those those uh, turnovers. Like, but the thing is here, like, 
th- I mean, Clemson shot themselves in the foot. Like th- mm-hmm. this could have easily been, you know, a 14, 21 game where Clemson, act, you know, wins, you know, in, in the fourth quarter, but like, so I, th- I, I, I agree here. The lesson is the questions for me are what's we need to keep a real, real close eye on Clemson because Florida, we were talking before the season, Florida state has to play Clemson. No, 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 no. Clemson has to play Florida state <laughs> and that look really, really bad. And then do right. we be ascending here. Now I think it's still a question. Let's not overreact. Cause like we just saw with the 12 game rolling average, they look good, right? They're they look good, but they're teetering on, you know, an average mm-hmm. defense. Now does that, do they continue to go up and get better and better and better? We're definitely going to keep an eye out. Right. And we're going to measure these things at the season, but yeah, hand wavy answer. Unfortunately, I think it's a combination of both because if, if Clemson, you know, just, you know, makes the first field goal and, and then the, the first touchdown, like they're winning that game. Like they're, they're going to be up in that game. The dynamic could be a little bit different. So you just like, it's just one of those things that the box score even tells a different story than the actual final score. Yeah, and I will say one last thing on this. The fact that we were even having this conversation of did Duke win or did Clemson lose that game yeah. is a significant pointer to me of the times to come for Clemson. That's my only point. I completely agree with you. And maybe yeah. maybe a, a even more, more important thing here, times to come for college. This sure. idea of who teams are the season before can f- switch – the fastest it's ever can it ever has before. Now, obviously, Duke was good last year, so this is probably not the best case. But we we're going to talk about other teams, Colorado. Like this, this is maybe an experiment that we're we talked. Everyone talked about for a long time how the experiment would go wrong. No one spent any time talking about what if the experiment goes right and what does that look like. And I think Dion and others are going to show us. Well, hey, actually, you can you can turn these teams over and have elite teams yep. very quickly. Right. Yeah. And and that, that's good. So we, and, and to the point about did Clemson lose it or did Duke win? I mean, you could argue or you could have a similar conversation with the Colorado and TCU game in a sense that, yes, Colorado made a lot of changes, transfer portal, all these new kids. Right. And they, they, they yeah. put up crazy numbers. Look where they're OK. Look where they are on this chart. Bottom left, like the worst team by most metrics defensively, except for I don't even know who that other team is technically below them there. Charlotte. Um, is that Charlotte? Okay, yeah. But they're, but they're, offense, in the but, but they're the, definitely the worst offensive and defensive combined team, no right, doubt. Combined, but this combined. but show then who they were with week one. Right, like exactly this, where I was going with this. Like yeah. the big right. I mean, th- I, I don't I just swagging it right. Th- this team made the biggest jump from last year to after week one now in this year in terms of efficiency. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Right. And this is with right. a completely, completely new roster. Yeah, so now to TCU's point, TCU didn't necessarily lose the game or anything like in the similar vein, I guess, where no. we were talking Colorado about Clemson, but Color- yeah, Colorado won this game. TCU, the thing that they had going against them is they were they were returning so little production yeah. on particularly 40%. the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, mm-hmm. and which which is just not good. And their and their blue chip ratio was not as high as maybe one might expect. And new offensive coordinator, ironically, went to Clemson. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm not carrying yeah. over so far after week one, but um, yeah, yeah and, and, obviously, and my, and my... Go ahead, okay, the talk of the town, I'm going <laughs> Colorado, the talk of the town, right? You can't, like, oh my god, how how it happened, what, what happened in week one now, the spread, the line movement that has taken place 11 points. From, 11 points. They were plus uh, seven and a half. I saw fours. The fours got eaten up. The minus fours got eaten up down to minus three, but there are minus threes sitting there all day right now. Colorado minus one of the three of the from wildest plus swings. seven and a half. Yeah. Wildest swings. I mean, I think I've ever seen. I'm probably, probably you guys too. So, all right, Steve. Sorry, man. Go ahead. No, I got to love that lag, baby. No, it's all good. Yeah. I have two good points to that. One is, you know, to your point, yeah, Colorado definitely won this game. No if answer buts about it. it. It goes to show how far TCU has fallen off. And while we had that question mark about Clemson, are they, aren't they? I think this for TCU is real, right? And let's, let's yeah. not pretend that TCU wasn't a Cinderella story last year. I mean, we saw what happened that national championship game. That's who TCU was. They punched up throughout the entire year, and it felt good, right? But – when you talk about this TCU team losing that much production off of a one in a maybe 10 year kind of run, 
I'm not shocked. And so, you know, I, I want to give Colorado credit where credit is due. Dion won that game. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Shadur or no, Shiloh Sanders threw for like over 500 yards, right? Oh, like yeah, they good. won that game. That you don't, you yeah. don't accidentally throw for 500 yards. No, right? no, they won um, that game. But with that being said, though, I do think Colorado is. I think that I think Colorado is probably not as good as we think they are. Week one, they're good. I'm not saying they're bad. But I do think we can see some regress, some regression against a good defense. And I think TCU was overranked and overhyped. But again, give credit where credit's due. I respect what Colorado did. Yeah. And this is the question, Kevin. I love that you have this up here because this is, I want to fade the public, so to speak, here so bad. But this is one that's tough because the question becomes okay, I want to fade them, but why? What's making me think Nebraska is this? juggernaut that i'm going to fade them with because they're still an unknown to me and the question i have here is you can see nebraska yeah. good offense bad defense um they played minnesota week one which is in the quadrant of elite okay so quite impressive if you then go back to w- the one one week power rating or, or matchup map what do we see we see nebraska and uh, minnesota they, literally right on top of each other in the quadrant of good defense bad offense so both these teams being something interestingly different than who they were last mm-hmm. year. And the million dollar question I have is, did the Nebraska team make that really elite uh, Minnesota team marginal or is Minnesota marginal? And this was just a shootout game. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, look, I, I think I'm going to save my fade Colorado maybe for one week and hope. That maybe Colorado covers, you know, wins by a touchdown. And, and it's just, I told you, I told you, I told you. I mean, we're seeing that all day in the comments. Um, and, like, I I think I'll probably save my fade for later because I don't know that Nebraska is the bullet I want to use. <laughs> because they're going to, the, the, we're going to talk about it. The Pac-12 is stacked, stacked. Ooh. I mean, they got to play Oregon. They got to play SC. I don't remember if they have to play Washington. But I mean, they're gonna they're gonna have to play some of and projected to be the best teams in the nation. So I think I'm gonna save my um um uh, like fade fade the uh the buffs for maybe a later date. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, is Nebraska a good candidate? Oh, you're on you're on mute, Kevin. Oh, Kevin, you're muted. My bad. My bad. Yeah, I I know I, I I agree with a lot of what you said. So no, I would not put my eggs in that basket either. Um, for for I guess basically an upset at this point, at least in the public side. Like if, if Nebraska wins, it's going to be like a public upset, right? You, you, no matter what the line is. Uh, so uh, no, I, I'm with you. And to the note about the Pac-12, like the only conference in the nation that went undefeated in week one. Yeah, they look like, damn good. Just how, what, yeah, the, talk did. about the poetry and the beautiful irony of it. Like last, you know, last year, the Pac-12 and then they're, <laughs> everything looks so good out the gates for them. You know, Mostly it's, because it's of, really a tragedy because of football or like m- money for market, you know, like for getting on TV. It's like you telling me you can't like all of these teams would have been wonderful TV games. Like I'm yeah. It, RIP yeah. Pac-12. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, again, I, I, I'm not sure if I'm saying Nebraska is going to, "Quote unquote," pull the upset on Colorado, but that game's going to be a hell of a lot closer, I think, than people think. Uh, and again, I'm not taking anything from Colorado, and except I completely agree, Correct. these are two unknowns, right? These are completely yeah. two unknowns. All I'm saying is, if if we're using Colorado, if we're if the measuring stick we're using for Colorado is the game against TCU, with the assumption that TCU truly should have been the number 17 ranked team in the nation. Yeah then I think you've got some trouble brewing for you. Um, TCU is not a 17th ranked team in the no. nation, um, and, and that game proved it. But again, hats off to Colorado. I think Nebraska will play them better. Uh, Colorado definitely could still win, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. That that upset hype train, that's that's going to come to a swift end uh, once again to end conference play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, you, TCU, going into the season, they're over under seven and a half. This is a team that the market was kind of telling us like, eh, this is maybe not going to be a good team. We, we were on, <laughs> yeah, we well, bet the under exactly. seven and a half, like yeah. we, this did, this didn't make sense. And so I wonder if the public's in for a rude awakening here, like is Colorado rem- remarkably better than, than what they were yesterday? Like, yes, hands down 100%. Anybody that projected that they would be better. You're right. Are they like 
literally top 25 team like people are acting? I don't think so. I think that they probably end up beating a median TCU team. Yeah, not bad. A median right. team, right? And is really, really, really impressive for them to do that. But like Agreed. they didn't beat USC. They didn't go and beat Oregon. Like they, th- these are not the same data points. Um, right. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking, I'm kind of talking myself in. I kind of want to, I kind of want to take Nebraska. <laughs> like I just, I think it's just, you can't tell me, you know, for sure they're 11 points better. You can't tell me for sure. I get right. I get the public. They're they're not really concerned about telling you what they know for sure. They're willing to bet what they believe. All good. I mean, literally, I only have to be like we're basically saying it's a one possession game. I'm just basically saying I think the possession is going to go in my favor versus yours. Yeah, Um, for sure. I mean, you you made the point at the outset, Seth. Like, call it this underscores how drastic teams can change year to year. True. So, yeah, Matt Rule and, and company is trying to do the same thing. Exactly right. Exactly right. So, all right. So Colorado, obviously big one of this, of the, of the weekend, the Clemson do game was a big one. Um, Seth, any other ones or any other teams rather that stood out and you're like, Holy shit. I cannot believe they put that kind of production on the field. Good or bad. Uh, LSU, Florida state. Um, I think Bud Elliott said it brilliantly when he said, you know, LSU should have killed FSU when they had the chance and they did not. And boy, oh boy, like that, you know, I was watching that game going into the, the, the halftime. I was oblivious to what was coming. I, no, yes, yeah, did, did Florida state have some drop balls, of course, but like, I mean, I don't understand how things got so bad so quickly. Jordan Travis, all, you know, all of a sudden just decided to do whatever he wanted. However he wanted those wide receivers were getting, 15 20 yard separations I, I mean i i could have done just a bad of a job honestly um i would have loved to see seth do you know if this exists anywhere if there's a split uh halftime stats first half epa especially defensively versus second half yeah probably i would love yeah because i would love to see I, I i didn't look very hard admittedly but i i searched around briefly couldn't couldn't find it but I, yeah, to that point, you can see where they ended up here on the on the chart, the quadrant of the quadrant of suck for LSU, right? But yeah, to to your point, like who would have seen that second half coming? Not I. I mean, not them. I. Not so. them. That first play was what like 40, 50 yard play, and then they don't score. I was I had some concerns, um, and I mean, this thing isn't even as close as. Um, it's not even as close as like the box score makes it seem because they scored like right. a you know garbage time touchdown. I know, yeah, that was wild. So yeah, with you, I mean, those, all all those games were uh, at least televised here in Arizona. Well, I think the FSU one was on ESPN, so nationally televised, but the Colorado one was on here. Did you get to watch that one, Seth? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I oh, I yeah, pay sure. hundreds of dollars a month so I can watch any game. Oh, you exists, got the, except you Pac-12 got the Network. Network. <laughs> Fuck you, Pac-12. <laughs> you can literally only hey, watch Pac-12 uh, if you have like a, a, a like a 1950s uh, cable box and a VCR. <laughs> I've downloaded two different apps, Verbo and another one, because they claim that you could pay to get it. I right. paid two months. Wow. You can't. All those people out there uh, don't believe don't believe what they tell you. You cannot stream Pac-12 unless you have a login from your network provider. That's ridiculous. Um, I mean, I guess one last question. I'm not sure if anyone got a chance to, to catch this game. It wasn't a marquee matchup, but is there trouble in Ohio State? Um, for the second straight week, we were going to have two starting quarterbacks. And I, and I know Michigan did that a while ago with Kate last McNair year sure. and Jim McCarthy. Yeah, yeah. right. Like, I, 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 it's, it's been done before. I'm not saying it, it's crazy, but Ohio State, 23 to 3 against Indiana, a, a team, you know, cements it in the quadrant of suck. I'm I'm curious to see how that's going to work out. But are they going to be in the quadrant of suck? Like, if you start yeah. adjusting that EPA no, no, per Indiana. play, okay, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's what I'm saying. You start oh, adjusting yeah. that EPA per play by opponent. Well, that EPA per play is going to look really fucking good because that was one of the worst. That was one of the best offenses in the nation. And because right now we've only have the one game, it you know that number looks a little bit different than it actually may. I mean, to put this in perspective from a modeling standpoint. This wasn't on the card to bet. Why? Our model said that they would win by 29 points. We're right around a one possession you know, difference there. Well within a standard deviation. Mm-hmm. I, 
I'm with you here. I didn't get to watch it. Um, I don't know if it's time to freak out. I don't know if it's time to freak out. They went to Indiana. They did their thing. Did they dominate by 25, 30, 50, you know, the normal Ohio State thing? No, but I don't know if it's quite time to freak out. I, I think we need a couple yeah. more games just until we start freaking yeah. out. Well, let, let, sure. me, let me rephrase that because, you know, the, right now we've all we've said this last week. The Big Ten is supposed to be this big competition between Ohio State and Michigan. And we talked about yeah. maybe some dark horses from the other side of the conference. But I, you know, Ohio State's key was that they were supposed to have the best receiving room in the country and have this explosive, you know, quarterback play coming in. And I don't yeah. know if we, I, I don't know when we're going to see that. And that's all I'm saying. But I'm with you. I'm with you. I make make things make matters a little more interesting. I didn't realize I I forget the I don't know the quarterbacks names yet at Ohio State, but one of the guys that was the starter, the guy that was started, he from Philadelphia, him and Marvin Harrison Jr. went to the same high school. They played high school football together. I didn't know that. There's even more continuity. Yeah. Wow, interesting. Right. So I don't know. Pretty pretty wild. Okay. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, however many games there were, like there was a lot to digest, a lot to break down. So I mean, it, th those are just some of the ones, yeah, that, that caught our eye. That was some of the more marquee ones too. But um, let's let's talk a little. I want to talk a little bit about our the, our model and the, and uh, the predictions from from last week and really since since week zero. So oh yeah, I don't these don't have yeah, week so, zero unfortunately, but yeah, right. Week, so week zero we cleaned up. Yeah, four yeah, and one. Week zero, week, week zero was good, and and this is this is one of the you can, I would say buzzwords, but you know this is this is variance perhaps to an extent, right? You're not going to win consistently game to game, week to week, but you spread that you spread a, a model's performance out over a larger sample size yeah. of season, and you in theory see it start to fluctuate less and less. Right? Yeah. So, one hundred percent. And then the other thing to you know, couple things. Yes, that's one hundred percent right. We're still honing in what, like, we have a very predictive model, but like that gets you, let's say, seventy five percent of the way. the The twenty five percent is kind of arguably the hard, the hardest, you know, mountain to climb because you have to figure out what you're regressing to in the market, how you're regressing to it, how you're quantifying the edges. Like, we're going back and forth between value frameworks. But one thing I want to say for the model in defense of it, even though it had a lackluster week one after having a good week zero. We, you know, the one metric you want to look at as a leading indicator of success is closing line value. You know, how does the market assess your picks? Are they agreeing or disagreeing? Right. In uh, UMass, we were able to get that 38 and a half. It closed at 35. That's huge CLV. In, mm -hmm. um, uh, so that's UMass. And um, the, uh, where's the Hawaii, Hawaii Stanford? We Hawaii. got that number. That number closed at three. We got these, we got seven and a half. We didn't get eight and a half, but we got seven and a half. Um, we had Utah State that closed at 23. We got the 25 and a half. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that we got really good CLV on. 30, uh, Nevada. Uh, no, that didn't move. Um, so, I mean, there was a lot. Model. I think it was all but two. I think it was all but two games. Yeah. There was some element yeah. of CLV. Like either a hook, a half, a half right. point, or whatever. We, we only saw, ironically, uh, from the ones I remember, negative CLV in the uh, yeah. <laughs> LSU game. Uh, th that, That's that went from and, two and a half to one. And just one quick note on that: like I saw a bunch of stuff going around on X, like after we after week one had ended, because it was it was it was this was so much a thing where people who preach and live and die by CLV only, which you know maybe you ne shouldn't necessarily do. Like it's not the end all be all per se, but. It, it is one of the markers, like you said, set the sort of long-term indicators of success, right? But there, it was I saw meme after meme after meme, like, you know, CLB betters in shambles after week one yeah. because they nothing, all lost. They yeah. all lost. So. Yeah. And uh, there was a huge move, San Jose State, from 16 to uh, – they went from plus 16 and a half to 14. They fucking got mm -hmm. rocked. Like, yeah, no, no. If CLV, yeah, yeah. If, you, if you were chasing steam on Saturday – the tugboat ran you over this time. Like, um, like, uh, yeah, it was, it was rough, but, but like, but you know, the bigger point is, yeah, like a model that is allowing you to generate CLV means that's more in line with the market than 
than yeah, not, you're, right? You're, and so your true you north, know, your compass, your true north is probably pointing in the right direction. Yeah, fair. And you know this this says eight and eleven, right? That's not even reflective. This is tr like trying to be as scientific as possible. We say take two percent or better. So that takes that four in one week we had in week zero and makes it a two in one week, right? Because technically only three of those bets were above two percent, and then these are the two percent. But there were other games. You know, I <laughs> kick myself. Uh, our model had Wyoming over Texas, uh, Wyoming over, was it Texas Tech? No, Texas Tech. Less no, it was a uh, state. Right. Texas Wyoming, who do they, who do they beat? I totally forgot. I don't know. They beat somebody. And um, our model had Wyoming and I cashed the bet out because it was only 1% EV. So like, you know, we're, we're Texas dialing Tech. it in here. Texas Tech. That's right. Oh, it was, it was Texas Tech. It was. Yeah. All right. My bad. Te who did, oh, Texas State beat Baylor. All yeah, the Texas right. schools is beating right. each other up, I guess. That's right. Well, oh, the one we did get negative CLV. That's ironic. We got crazy negative CLV on um, Houston versus San Antonio. We bet it at, at I bet it at a pick them at zero, and that thing closed at Houston plus three. Um, obviously that that was a beautiful right. bet that that went our way the whole time, um, right. and I, I was surprised that the market loved UTSA. Yeah. But, so we'll see. We'll bounce back. So, we have some pretty interesting games. Um, yeah, in week two. I, w I, w I was just going to say that. So, so segueing into week two, look ahead, so to speak. So, Steve, let me let me get your your, your take real quick. So, when you were when you've been breaking down these over the past couple of days, which because by the way, week week zero ends Saturday night effectively, you know, only a couple games thereafter. But yeah. the data is then available for us to crunch to get into the database and run the model so we had this output i don't know when you text us at the way it was saturday night or sunday basically monday uh sunday morning. i ran so, the mall i had i could have ran it at midnight i was tired but i ran yeah. it first thing in the morning i i didn't this is my first time like trying to catch true openers and they're still learning there too because actually what we ended up catching was retail books opening and i'm not sure where they were opening from um, or they, I'm not sure, but the Circa and Pinnacle were a couple hours yep. later from their openings, which were much, in, very much in line with the retail. So I don't know if retail has like a direct feed to like their power ratings and they can put up the lines earlier because we know retail is not doing, they're not, they're not putting up spreads. Uh, they're yeah. not putting up openers. They're just not. Um, right. so yeah, they, the, the minute the game is posted, the database can be updated. Right. Okay. So, so that, that point aside, Steve, let me get, let me get you to pop up real first. So what's, what, what's standing out to you? What team are you, are you, are you excited about seeing or what team are you like, Whoa, wait a sec, what the hell's going on here? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think there's no spoiler amongst us three. The one we're excited about most is the Alabama Texas game because we'll be there and that'll be game day. Yeah. And so um, this will be a great chance to see is, is Bama, is, is Bama back or is Texas back? Right. Yeah. Someone's coming. Someone's got to be back. Uh, and, and yeah. Someone's got to be back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll let Seth talk about that game. I know he has some feelings on that. But for me, um, I love this UCF team, man. John Reese Plumlee had an absolute field day out there. And they did this kid looks good. Um, and so uh, oh, I'm sorry, um, he, he looked he looks good. And I think you're going to see this team go through and just make a, a bunch a bunch of, uh, of scoring down here. So I like that. And then honestly, what scares me on this, and maybe you guys kind of talk me off this clip, uh, Texas Tech versus Oregon. Now, again, yeah. I know it's one game. I don't want to yes. overreact. But damn, Oregon looked good. Damn, yeah. they looked good. Now, again, it gets, it gets, it gets the bumps. I get it. But, yeah, FCS uh, team. That one should be interesting for me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't talk you off a ledge here because this thing feels gross. I can only tell you this. You can't bet the seven and a half anymore. Nope. The market market said that that's a <laughs> that's a good number. So yeah. I agree it's gross, but you can't touch it anymore. Which you know what we just talked about. You know I, I don't know how much you, well, you should believe in CLV if you don't. Now is it the end all be all no, but over a large sample size, the market's going to be more right. Now where the thing closes is still yet to be seen. Right? Some right. big syndicate could come in tomorrow and bet you know, bet Oregon at the six and a half and then move this back to seven and then all, you know, or seven and a half. And all of a sudden that doesn't look so good. I'm with yep. you. If you do look at the box score, advanced uh, box score for Texas tech, they didn't actually play so bad. This is kind of a case of did Wyoming win or did Clemson or to, you know, the Clemson argument we were just having did Texas tech lose or did, you know, or did, uh, uh, 
Wyoming win kind of thing. But mm-hmm. yeah, they look good. Bo Nix coming back, new offensive coordinator there. Clearly pretty potent. <laughs> um, they're projected to be a damn good team. Yeah, seven and a half. Get, you know, even if I could right. get it, I can't lie to you. It feels a little light. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I don't know about you guys, but you mentioned it, Steve. Like, I am fighting the urge to like not bet a little bit irresponsibly on the Texas Alabama game just because of the fact that I'll be yeah, we're going to be there. Person, the but, problem is we can't get the six and a half yeah. anymore. I'm with you. I know. And I, I was know. thinking the That's same 100%. thing. But like yeah. now you have to lay, lay seven, seven and a half. And it's like, ooh, right. it doesn't it doesn't feel. Yeah, same. let's there, there. There is a fine line where you, you got to You obviously need to bet responsibly. So that's I'm trying to exercise caution for sure. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you guys 100 percent. I, I think that's going to be a, a good that's obviously a good marquee matchup. The college game and everything showing up and the Oregon game. Yeah, to me is is kind of gross. I, I, I wasn't able to get um I wasn't able to get the number, so I haven't technically bet it yet. We'll see if there's any more movement on it to your point, Seth. But, yeah, right now that feels uh, a little uncomfortable for sure. But um, other I, than that, what is this? Hey, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Uh, I was going to ask a quick question. Um, who, who's been, and I, I don't know the answer to this. Who's been in college longer, Bo Nix or Stetson Bennett? Oh, uh, Stetson Bennett. <laughs> Stetson, <laughs> Stetson Bennett, uh, Stetson Stetson Bennett, Bennett Wilder, was in man. college so long that – he was on the same team as Sonny Michelle. Sonny Michelle yeah. was in the league, won two championships, and is retired. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah in the yeah. amount of time Stetson's been in college, he had a whole NFL career. <laughs> I don't and they were on the same happens. team. They wild, were on the same that's team. That's the wildest yeah. stat I've ever heard, actually. Wow. Dude, Stetson that's Bennett insane. plus 10,000 offensive rookie of the year. You heard it here first. Um, I, I can't tell you how much. I sneakily love, and I, I look, I will eat my words here. Cal Auburn, model liking Cal, I can't tell you how much I love that. Auburn looks so much better than I think they are. They hurt UMass's quarterback in the first quarter, and they were sitting ducks. He's a running RPO guy. He was good before he was injured in that game. They went down and scored first. UMass did. They injured him. It was sitting ducks because he literally couldn't move. And they were just sack after sack, pick six. That that game looks so much worse than it actually is. If California can slang the ball like they did against North Texas, I would not be surprised. Cal not only covers this, maybe upsets. I am not buying into that Auburn. I'm not buying into that Auburn win. We have one data point, and I think it looks super impressive. But even on a per play basis, it's not like it's not that crazy. And if you don't injure UMass's quarterback, I mean, as somebody that had the 38 and a half, that bet was covering with four minutes left in the fourth. Okay. Like, yes. Did they end up, you know, covering? Yes, they did. But like, I think that that is an anomaly. And I like, I like Cal. I like Cal here. I really do. I don't know why, but I do. I have never liked Cal before in my life, but. They looked really, really good. They looked so efficient. First time and for I'm everything. just assuming. Like, I'm just saying they're going to keep it going. And I think there's a little bit of a fluke there. And not fluke in Auburn, but like, I'm not going to be surprised if Cal puts up a pretty big fight here. Okay, good. All right. So, Steve, model, model, model driven or not, do you, what, are, is there any other one play that you're looking at or one team that's your eyeball this week and you're like, I got to have it? I need it now. Give me a double. Uh, no, no, I mean, not, not for me. I think we really cover the ones that I, I like the most. So, okay. About, I got you. Yeah, no, I, I got a, uh, yeah, I got a double. Oh, that one. I got a double, uh, a triple, uh, a white Russian, a, a Fiji, <laughs> whatever. I give me Oklahoma, 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 Oklahoma. I bet the, I, I couldn't get the 14. I think I ended up betting a 16. Um, okay. Who they they look, Damn good. I don't even know. I was trying to pull it up. I, I couldn't remember <laughs> off the top of my head. Um, yeah, they, oh, you don't even got to know who they play. You love them. No, no, I do. I do. <laughs> Our model shows that there's value, but it's it's like one percent. Um, I just don't yeah. happen to have have it on the top of my head. Can somebody pull up the uh, unabated uh, odd screen yeah, if yeah. they have it on their I end? Um, yeah. I I think it, I bet it at sixteen. I, they play. I don't remember right, who yeah. they play. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who they play. Um. 
this team is good, man. I, look, if go back, go back to the one week EPA uh, matchup map. Like, this team is quadrant of elite. Like, they have sixty percent blue chip ratio. Uh, Venables third year. They look damn good every which way. I think that they recognize the situation they potentially in. Texas has to go into Alabama, right? They have to play SMU. Perfect. Yeah. They don't even like I, you know, just hop, skip, and a jump to Texas. No problem. And they hate Texas schools. Uh, Texas and Oklahoma hate each other. If Texas law, Texas, you know, played kind of shaky against uh, Rice. Now I don't know is Rice improved. I'm not sure, but they have a chance here that Texas goes into Alabama, loses. They yeah. if if Oklahoma comes out and does what they're supposed to do, they're the favorite now. All of a sudden, in the Big Twelve. And I think they can strike while the iron's hot against a it technically an inferior opponent that from a from a skill standpoint, recruiting standpoint, is going to be way less talented. I think that this is a this is a game to make a statement. This is a game to win by 21 to 28. Um, because if the opportunity can, can, that you're gonna on. have, yeah. Can you make a statement against SMU though? Yes, because because tech Texas might lose probably will lose to Alabama. And now all so of a sudden, of the narrative and the direction okay. is, oh, well, they were the number two team. Okay. They blew out week one. They're, they, they, they dominate SAU, SMU, right? If you dominate SMU, SMU is not a shitty team. I don't know where they're at on the the, quad, the quadrants here, but like they should be like a median team here. Um, like I think that that's a big deal. And then all of a sudden, the momentum is in Oklahoma's direction here to do something, right? Now they're the favorite to win the Big 12. And Texas is playing second fiddle. And if I'm not mistaken, usually Oklahoma, Texas play early on in the season because they play at the Texas State Fair every year. So I think they play like week four or something like that. So we're going to see these teams meet pretty quickly. So I think they're going to try to get as, mo- as much momentum as they possibly can. I think they recognize that this game is the spot to do it. You're talking about betting irresponsibly. That's that's my that's my. <laughs> That's where I'm probably going to be betting irresponsibly. I'm not going to lie. What's yeah. is it still right. at 16? It's still at 16. Uh, yeah. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oklahoma. Um, yeah, Pinnacle has at yeah, Pinnacle has at 16. Um, what did best, it open at 14? Line, it's 14. Best line is minus 14 and a half. Where? Where? Uh, here, hold on. Let me let me, let me bet. Uh, looks like sport trade. Hold on. Don't get them too excited. Yeah. I'm, yeah. No, it, it, it's just sport <laughs> trade. Sorry. Yeah. You, yeah. Sorry. You can't actually. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I I I love it. I love it. Okay. I love it. I don't care what a model says, even though the model points in that direction. I think that there's. I think this is a this is a team that no one's thinking about. That they're obviously know they're good, and I think they have a lot to prove here. Um, and it's just kind of setting up for that. All right. I love it. I'm good. So yeah, I mean, I I don't. My only, my only uh, take or take going into this weekend is I think the Pac-12 continues the – I don't know if they're going to go undefeated again, but they're going to have another great weekend. Just, just like in my gut, you know, I feel like this is going to be the most poetically justice – poetic justice type of season for the Pac-12. Like, I, I might have gotten the team wrong because I was kind of high on USC coming into it. I know, I know there's some value, and we think there's value to be had on Oregon and Washington, but yeah. I feel pretty strong that this is finally the year that the Pac-12 gets a team breaks into the through. Final Four and breaks it at least into the national championship game. Not quite ready to wow. say they're going to win because too much is to be played, but I think there's too much talent. It's very top-heavy. I like the opportunities that lay, uh, lay in front of most of the teams. So I think Pac-12 continues to, work, to roll this weekend. Unfortunately, so uh, SC plays Stanford. So someone, someone's got to lose. <laughs> I mean, Stanford is not. Stanford's not. Yeah, exactly. So they can't go. They don't even count. They week, don't even count. <laughs> no. Yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, give me a break. Can yeah, I tell no, you no, that I, I secretly want to take Stanford in that game. It's not even a secret. I think there's value on them. Is there not? Like, I can't tell. Like, Stanford actually looks not that bad. You can see where they're at on the matchup map. Like, this is a median team. They're kitting 28. There is, there is, there is technically a bit of value on them. About yeah, not even a half percent, but yes, there is value. Is Steve? Can I get a? Is there a twenty-eight in, in a hook on the board at all? Here, let's take a look. 
Uh, for those who know, we're using unabated uh, odds prop screens. Yeah, so shout out unabated. They got the uh, best odds screen and tools in the game. Oh, Go check them out. Oh, oh, oh baby. No. Oh, baby. Oh, no. Because I think you, it opened you, at 28, so I don't want to see too many. Like, I don't want to see like a 32 right now. That'll make me feel. What is, I, well, what is how, about, how, how, about, how about a 29 and a half? 29 and a hook. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, like, uh, <laughs> you don't like it no more. All right. All right. No, no, no. I I like it. I like it. No, I'm saying I'm not. You I, like it even I more. Right. Yeah, you get twenty nine and a half on look. FanDuel and Bet MGM right now. All right. What's what's it at at Pinnacle? Pinnacle has it at, at twenty nine. Usually twenty eight uh, and a half. Twenty eight and a half. But twenty eight yeah. and a half for minus one hundred four. Yeah. As somebody that's been starting to study these odds like hundreds of games, I, you really do yeah. see like DraftKings and FanDuel do some fuck shit. Like they literally take the games at the market makers and they just shade them to like where the public is like. Right. They're just like, yeah, fuck you. We're going to charge you a, like a stupidity tax, basically. <laughs> um, hey, real, real, oh, real quick to wrap up the matchup map, though, uh, to your point, your question earlier, yep. Seth, SMU is right above Texas. Oh, oh. how about that? Quadrant, Interesting. Quadrant right, of right, good, good. Yeah. defense, bad offense. Right, Give it right. to me, baby. Oklahoma oh. wins by 28. All right. 20, no, 21. Yeah. I'm not even going to be crazy. Market 16, they win by 21. I but I don't have good. to sweat I'll, it. I don't have to sweat it. They I, cover 21 instantly, and I never look back. <laughs> uh, all right. I hope we're here next week talking about it, baby. I hope we are. So, yeah. I'm betting it irresponsibly. Week, all right. Good, good, good. Well, not good, but good luck to you. At least. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, boys. I think, I think that'll do it for us this weekend. A lot of good stuff happened week one. Looking forward to another good week in week two. Um, we'll be back again next week to, to break down all the, the matchup maps, the data and talk about model output as well. For anyone who's not familiar, if you, if you guys want all of this information and more, the best place to get it is at our website, bullytheboard.com. You can see all the matchup map stuff up there for free. If you're interested, in, um, our full access package is only $9 a month. You get access to all the model outputs and some additional efficiency data as well for both college and NFL. So yeah, and the, the raw database, the database, if you want to do your own analysis, you have 100%. hundreds of variables for every game from 2007 onward from FCS and FBS teams. Um, so you can really create your own power ratings or get as deep or not as deep as you would like. Yep. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, good value add for anyone looking to get into the to the modeling side of it for sure. So, all right, boys, that'll be it. Good luck to everyone this weekend, and I will see you both in just a couple of days. So excited, yeah. boys. Take care, guys. Be and well. we're out. See you guys.